so you, we are talking about what methodologies that you may use in, in, in football and uh, it's definitely needed to be able to evaluate the players which can be done by testing but it can also be done by physical uh, measurements like the GPS system okay. like uh, other type of electronic system to uh, understand whether what they are doing in the game but also in the training and then you, you need to use also physiological type of measurements like heart rate, like sometimes it can be useful also to measure the blood lactate. And uh, in terms of rehabilitation, it's, uh, it can be needed to, to do specific type of measurements like muscle force uh, okay. and so on. So the technology is definitely a part of uh, top class football. It's at least uh, there's a lot still to be gained in terms of using those methodologies. In England, they have a, a tradition and that has developed in the past 20 years of including science in the sports okay. uh, departments. Um, but there's still a lot to be gained by having a better interaction between the people that understand the sports science and the people that are on the field. Uh, in, in, in Italian and Italy, there is uh, also that approach, uh, but that can also, in my opinion, be developed much further. Mm. And uh, what we need are people that have a basic understanding of both worlds, understanding the science, but also understanding what's going on in the field. They, they have been at that approach. Uh, Milan Lab is an example of uh, trying to use scientific information in, in practice. Okay. Uh, what is so important is to create the link is that you have people that understand both worlds and take into account all the aspects related to performance in football. Okay. Psychology, tactical, technical aspects and uh, especially the need of recovery. You can have all the best, best training methods in the world, but they will not work if you do, don't put it into the sense of that particular group of players you have or each individual in that group. Yeah. One of the things that is lacking is actually taking into account the response of each individual player, which you need to do uh, because they cannot respond in the same way the different players. Okay. Oh, I see, it's in the course of the uh, there's a lot of to be gained again by understanding well how each individual player is responding and uh, and there the science is coming in to play and you can just consider a player that has been injured and becomes re-injured because that's quite common in football and that's because the rehabilitation hasn't been optimal so you can gain a lot from that you can save okay. a lot of money so just yeah. having to by one less player by optimizing actually the recovery of, of your players and treat them well. Then you may not need 24 players actually, you may need 18 players to create a team. When we won the championship in 2003 in Italy, we had very, very few injuries. We were using ma mainly 18 players hmm. uh, because uh, we make sure that those players had recovered very really well and were able to cope with all the demands playing in Champions League, playing the Campionato and so on. So it's a question about also having a proper treatment of each player. And, and there the science can help. I'm coming back to individual players. What would be the optimal for that type of player? And, and increasing power will definitely benefit most players. So a proper program for that at a, at a proper time in his development or her development as a football player will be important. Uh, biomechanics uh, can definitely also be used in terms of optimizing things and uh, that technology should also be included as a base of any research type of department within a football club. Oh, but it's also a question about tradition. Um, you used to do that and uh, I think that the clubs need to build up a system that gives the support to the coaching staff and not 
having the coaching staff to start again from scratch when you move your coaching staff from one team to the other you start from scratch say okay now we build up a system and they may not stay there for long enough to mm. to create a system that is actually working so the clubs need to have an infrastructure where these things are in place that means when you come a new coach he get all that support to optimize the performance of the player okay. and then that will also be more attractive for a coach having that system into play so the clubs have to start with a structure of these things if you can and you could have some basic measurements that follows the players that they need to do and that will give you at least an impression about what is the capacity of that player you can watch him on the field of course but those type of evaluation would be useful uh, to have. I remember many years ago there was an English club calling me an afternoon and said we just tested a player he came from Italy and um, uh, is this test result good they asked me I said no it's not good don't sign that player and they said we just signed him and we paid uh, 20,000 uh, 20 million euros for that particular player and he played three games that season, hmm. that particular player. So by having a basic evaluation of the player can provide you with some important information. Hmm. I see that we, we put all this technology into, into place, that we develop individual program, even with a team sport like football, which will allow the time with the team to create the team create the group which is so essential to perform at a top level but at the same time gives individual training and provide the optimal preparation of each player in the team that type of combination where it's a natural way a natural approach I think would definitely increase the level of, of football in the future okay. There's no doubt that sports science can significantly contribute to the, to the development of football or any sport. But we also have to understand that uh, what's actually within the sport. So the sports scientists also have to understand how can we put this into practice. And just, just emphasizing you have to do this and this. So mm -hmm. I would ask the sports science people to get deep insight to the sport they are dealing with, understanding what are all the components, just following what's into that. It can be a number of good reasons for doing one thing, but there can be a number of good reasons for the coach to do different things from a psychological point of view, from experience and that on. And that to make that integrated, both people need to know at least a bit of what's happening in the different worlds. Mm. And that's why the sports scientists could spend time understanding very well what is going on and then have the dialogue with the people. It's not like we are presenting things and say hopefully they can use it and the other way around hopefully we can gain from this. It is by an interaction between the two partners to understand the different worlds that things are uh, developing. Also the research based on the experience you may gain from it. knowing the sport you can pose better research questions. As I said uh, previously, England is, is having that into place, having the scientific approach to these things. And I think uh, they, they have a structure that, that can be useful. I'm not sure that they are using it to an optimal extent. Mm -hmm. But um, I think each club has to find its way to structure the team. We cannot force anybody to do these things. If you find that there is a or the club have at least an idea that that can be beneficial, they should try to establish that and then bring in the people that have that expertise to help them developing that. But I think uh, it, it has to be done in a, in a combination where the scientific world is presenting in a way that is convincing to the club structure mm. that uh, they can benefit from that and then that has to be built up and that will make jobs in the future. But I think 
the approach cannot be that now we have sports scientists employ us and we will see what's happening because nobody can believe in that and there will be a certain risk that a number of people are failing and then that will set everything back saying okay that was a mistake we did that so it has to be a very clear approach I think in the future.